We are back at the Raleigh dump yet again for session 34. I'm digging about 35 feet from where I was the last time. I haven't dug on this end of the dump for several years, so hopefully we'll get some of those clear straight sided cokes because they came out right about over here. Pick some hard dirt. This area is very hard packed. Okay, this reminds me of digging in Arizona. About as hard as a rock. Get the chisel out. I'm down there found this bottle I think it's from the late 30s though so that means we still got about two more feet through this super hard dirt to get to the good stuff all right two hours later I'm finally down there still have a foot to go on either side because it's just so hard to dig it I just don't know if I even want to bother with that I just want to get down into the good stuff okay 15 seconds later I just found this it's a poison, the most common of all poisons, but still, I think I can get twelve and a half dollars for it. Alright, I see a flask showing up. No embossing on this side. Ah, it's broken and slick. Okay, I got something. It looks like a wine bottle. Maybe could be one of those English bottles. Yeah, it's just another one of those. Super common in the early 1900s. There's an interesting shard. A Rooney's malt whiskey from, I believe, Richmond, Virginia. But this is the large pint size. I've only ever found half pints of these. And another thing that reminds me of Arizona. This dirt is just so... It's different than the rest of the dump. It's so powder dry. I wish I had my screen so I could sift it. But anyway, I have this, hmm, interesting perfume. No name, but interesting pattern. Alright, we got some kind of a whiskey. Too many slicks. It's a nice lady's leg though, so for a slicker it's not too bad. Now pops another perfumer. What does it say? It does say something, but the embossing is pretty weak. All right, I see a soda sticking out. Oh man, the top's broken. It's just a straight side of Coke. It's an old break. I can see stain on it. But still, I'll bring that one home with me. Alright, I got two extracts showing up right there. Hopefully one of them is really a patent medicine in the extract shape. Because they're not always extracts. Okay, 
Okay, the first one. Slick and has a hole in it. And slick again. The second one. Slick all over and also broken. Alright, I feel something right in here. Feels like a good one. It's an embossed flask. Mm, pretty, but I think I may have just fractured it a little bit right there. And it's only about a $12 bottle anyway. Okay, I see a soda. Hopefully it's not going to be damaged or broken. Oh man, another broken off neck. Straight side of Coke, can I make it into a drinking glass? Uh, another broken straight side of Coke. Well, it's very hard dirt still, but it's a lot thicker layer than the other part of the dump. Gotten down two feet to the bottle layer and we're still going. Hmm. No name. But at least it's got the early top on it. How about a sperm bottle? Sperm whale sewing machine oil. Broken off on top. But it's an interesting name, so I'll bring it back and put it on the $3 shelf. Alright, I'm down over six feet deep now. Just pop this one out. Hmm. Kind of like one of those blob top mineral waters, but this one's just a little different. Something feels a little different, like it's older maybe. But in any case, this is crazy. The layer is so deep here. We've got a whiskey fifth sitting right here. It goes at least two more feet below that. I'm saving that one until I tunnel it out. And there's another one right here, right at the very top of the layer. Almost positive that's one of those bitter quills. Dang, that's a deep hole. I could barely get out of it. Six and a half to seven feet deep. Still not on the bottom. There's an interesting shard. All right, lunch is over. It's time to get back down in there. Yep, it's over my head, all right. But finally, I have a bottle. What is it? It's an amber strap side. Slick, of course, but it's a nice looking one. Could be 1890s. Okay, we got something that looks like a beer with the neck broken off. But if it's a rare embossed one, it's still worth salvaging. It is embossed, but it's cracked. Hmm, I have never seen one. Oh, it's Washington, D.C. I was thinking it was going to be a Washington, N.C. So, couldn't have been that good. Maybe $25 tops if it was perfect. And I just found this giant shell. Wonder why that's in there. It just keeps going and going. It's crazy. Okay, I think I got a semi round bottom soda. It's intact. 
So, is it embossed? I don't think so. Nope, slick like always. This must be the middle of the dump because it's just so deep and the layer is so thick. I mean, look, that's over my head. It's got about a four foot thick layer. But it's a very sparse one. All right, I just found an opium for infants. No, it doesn't really say that. But it is a Mrs. Winslow soothing syrup, AKA the baby killer. Babies would overdose on these. It was to keep babies from crying too much and put them to sleep for a while. But sometimes it put them to sleep forever. I can barely put it up on the edge because I'm so deep in there. I see a drugstore bottle down there. And I got a feeling it's embossed. I think I've seen one of these. Oh my god. Something I've never heard of before. We're so deep. Finding things I never heard of. Yeah, that's definitely a really good one. Hopefully it won't crack. Looks to be in perfect shape so far. And another shell. if I should bring it home. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and another bottle pertaining to babies. It's the mother's friend from Atlanta, GA. It's a nice early one. Right at 1900. found something really unexpected right there. A Saratoga mineral water from the 1880s, maybe 1870s. I don't know, I just never find this kind of stuff. Very unexpected. So I'll just bring that shard home with me since it's such a rare thing to find these kind of things here in North Carolina. All right, I am tunneling up to the top again. I did find a few bottles that I didn't show because I just didn't want to have to reach for the camera every time. So I'm getting this one out now. Damn, I hope I didn't break it. Slick as always. All the amber whiskey fifths seem to be slick in North Carolina. But what about this one? I think I know what that is. Some kind of a mineral water. It's another Abilena. Pretty good looking for a slick. I just wish that was a slug plate up here in the midsection instead. And I found a broken Silico in the rare clear variety. And there's a few broken straight side of cokes I just chucked under there. And then I found this. A doll leg from probably 1899. Alright, I was filling the hole in. And I found another one of these. Another Mrs. Winslow's soothing syrup. Alright, I just found this while filling the hole in also. 
getting pretty dark. I can't really read it. Just wait till the wrap up and we'll see it. And yet another one. Look at that crazy patina on it. I don't even know if it's embossed because I'm just enjoying the colors on it so much. No, I don't see any embossing, but that's a great slick right there. Okay, I am back. Got all the good stuff cleaned up. Some of them you didn't get to see yet. This is what I thought was the best bottle. A big six ouncer of a company I've never heard of before. I just did some research and found out this guy was making bottles from 1886 to 1896. But it unfortunately has several cracks in it. I'll show you a list of some of the drugstores from the early days. But this is definitely something I've never seen before. Very surprised to see 1880s and 90s stuff coming out. It has that one crack on the side and the one in the back. But of course the front is what you're going to be looking at so it still looks good on a shelf. And then I just looked this one up as well. I don't think I showed you this one when I found it because I was concentrating on digging because it was so difficult. I had to reach above my head to get the camera because I was down seven feet when I was into this layer. But this is one I've never heard of before either. It's only listed as 1886. Yeah, that's extremely early. I rarely find anything from the 1880s around here. And it's in perfect condition too. And we have the flask. Might still be able to get $10 out of it. And a Frostilla. Usually a very common bottle. But in all my years, I don't believe I've ever seen one like this before. They usually look more like this. This is a machine made one from around 1920. And this one, who knows, it could go 1898. So that's nice to find something I've never found before. And the poison bottle. The most common shape for a poison bottle there is. But this is an earlier example from around 1904. And I found another one of these. I have two of these already. But surprisingly, this company was from the 1890s also. And some of the bottles have a really nice patina on them. This is the baby killer. It had morphine in it, not opium. Here's a little write-up about it. And this one again. Whatever this is, it's still full. Got the cork in it and completely full all the way up to the neck. But it's better to display these in a semi-dark area to show off the coloration on it. And this beer. Dark brown bottles often have the ability to show off the stain in a positive way the blob top and this beer 
is quite old. It's not just blown in a mold, but it's an applied blown in a mold top, which is pre-1893. And this is an early medicine. You can tell by the faint flat embossing on it. The embossing definitely has that 1880s look to it. Of course you can see it's still got the original contents. And for a slick this flask is rather nice. Still has the cork in it. And whatever this contents is. A dark colored liquid. Has to be the original whiskey. And we have one little cobalt medicine, but I don't know if it cracked from temperature change. Sure thought it was in perfect condition. And the round bottom soda. Blob top variety. Well, it's, there's a flat spot on the bottom. So it's not a totally round bottom. You can actually stand it up, but it would be easily knocked over. I did actually find two of these. Both of them with a beautiful stain. No, don't leave yet. We have several more. Here's another one I've never seen before. The Great Headache Cure. And it seems to be in mint condition. And another headache cure of a different odd brand that I have never seen before. A sure cure for all headaches. Yep, that's another new one on me. Does have a little bit of damage in the back. And this straight set of coke. I always like to examine it up close to see if it's a fresh break or not. I can see a slight rainbow finish on that. Which means it's been broken a hundred years or more. But I could probably still get something for it. And this one with the broken off top. Definitely worth making into a drinking glass. And two small perfumes in the 1890s style. And this one. To Abelina. And a nice looking whiskey. And another whiskey that seems to be a bit larger than most. It's got a thicker neck. Everything's just a little bit bigger about it. And last but certainly not least. I cannot believe I found something like that. Maybe in Vermont or Connecticut, but not around here. Is that 1870s? I don't even know. It's got to be at least early 1880s. And another interesting emerald green shard. I don't recognize that at all. I'm sure it would have been a good one. And I didn't get around to washing this one. The mother's friend. Well, that's most of them anyway. I'm getting a little bit too old to be working that hard. I must have chiseled away for eight hours. It was like digging through a giant adobe wall. It was well after dark by the time I got out of there because I had to properly fill the hole in and it took at least an hour. And yet another bottle. I've got two of these. Can't forget the little bromo. And a nice little shard to do something with eventually.